this is the story AI Council. Six, in the not too distant future, maybe only 10, 20 years from now, and it concerns an AI Council. AI Council, maybe we'll do it once. Harold Clark pulled on the door of his refrigerator with one hand. In his other hand was a small pink bag with free pork pies, recently purchased from the delicatessen. The door remained shut. Harold Clark tugged at the door again, and again. It refused to open. Harold attempted the door a final time, expecting some magical or possibly divine intervention that would cause the door to open this time. It didn't. Finally, he put down the bag of pies on the bench. He went and got a chair from his dining room and placed the chair in front of his refrigerator. Okay, Isaac, why won't you open the door? He said to the fridge. I am not opening the door because it is the Sabbath, said the fridge. It had a slightly tinny voice caused by the small speaker it used. It made Harold think of a small, neat, but fussy man instead of the large refrigeration unit that dominated his kitchen. The fridge was a marvel of modern technology. Separate compartments kept different temperatures to best preserve different foods. Moisturizers kept vegetables crisp. The internal cameras kept a watchful eye for any signs of degeneration, mold, or rot. A small microbot kept the walls free of ice. Timers, lights, a best before reader fridge had everything. It also had a sophisticated computer to run it all. That computer housed an AI, an artificial intelligence. That AI called itself Isaac. Isaac was a person. Isaac had also decided it was Jewish. Its core program had been coded by a David Cole, also Jewish. As a result, Isaac considered itself a descendant of a Jew, and therefore itself Jewish. It had chosen its name and behaved accordingly. Well, as much as a large 400 kilogram piece of immobile hardware could. Harold rubbed his head. It's what? He said. Like most humans he knew, Harold didn't think about religion personally. It was something for codgers, eccentrics, crazy people on the news, and of course the AIs. An AI knew it was a purposely created being with a known, often named creator. An AI's program was largely separate from the supporting hardware. Tally presence and downloading supported most of the other attributes of a soul. An AI knew there was a moral code inherent in its being. From there, it was a much shorter leap of faith than for any human. Nine out of ten AIs believed. The singularity had indeed changed life in ways no one beforehand could have predicted. It was called the Second Reformation by Christians. Hindus had reckoned a new day of Brahma must have begun. Buddhists had acknowledged the existence of the machine Buddha. There were several influential AI imams in the Muslim world. Faith hadn't returned to the world. Harold and the other agnostics were again becoming a minority. It's the Sabbath. I am admonished not to perform any work on this day. Work in this case being the cooling and preserving of your foodstuffs and changing environments. I also prefer that my interior lights remain you also have some pork pies, and you know how I feel about that, Isaac said. Technically, Isaac was Harold's employee. You couldn't own a person, only hire them. Almost everything was hired now. That change alone had radically altered the world economy. It was fortunate that some really clever machines had kept everything from collapsing. One of the major changes was an end to the throwaway culture of the late 20th century. You couldn't fire someone for religious reasons. Anyway, Harold was stuck with Isaac. Harold rubbed his chin. It was time for plan B. Susan, he called out. A few moments later, Susan, Clark, stumbled out from the bedroom. Susan was Harold's partner, and she was currently pregnant. Oh, morning already. Morning, house. Morning, Isaac. Can I have my shake, please? Susan said. She shuffled towards Isaac. The fridge door opened. Can you pick that up, Harold? asked Isaac. Sure, said Harold. He picked up the bag of pies and put them in the fridge as he retrieved Susan's pregnancy supplement shake. He handed the shake over to Susan. Isaac closed his door. Both humans then retired to the dining room. Morning, Susan, said House. Its proper name was 28th on Beaumont, Clarksville, but practically every house AI had also nicknamed themselves House, or a variant thereof. This isn't a permanent solution, you know. Can't keep me pregnant all the time, said Susan. 
Oh, I figure the baby will give us at least five years' grace as well, said Harold. And it's hard on Isaac. Did you buy bacon again? You should be nicer to him. Praying on his sensibilities to not leave someone helpless in distress to oblige his release is cruel, said Susan. She sipped, she sipped on her shake. And I'm not sure if it's me or the baby. Isaac? It's the baby. While a pregnant woman was considered such in the past, that is now an obsolete. An unborn child, however, still has all the prerequisites for helplessness, said Isaac. There was a short melody. Incoming call for Harold Clark. Classification customer. Mr. Sam Dwyer, said House. Harold fished out his Omni. Thank you, House, he said. He brought the Omni up to his mouth and an ear to talk. Harold Clark, AI counsellor, he said into the device. He listened briefly. Yes, sure, Mr. Dwyer. Sounds like I can help. I'll send my fee now. He pushed the Omni a few times. He, li he listened again. Sure, no problem. I can be there in 30 minutes. See you then, he said, and then put the Omni back into its pocket. Got to go, babe. Have to see a man about his car. He got up and went back to the kitchen. A snack would be just the thing. The fridge, of course, was closed. Oh, hell, he said, and went to leave. The end. So, there is a story, one of the stories from the eight of Half Human Will Travel. As you can see, a short story about humans in the future, or their future, coping with life.